Okay, this video is going to talk a little bit about the triggering controls on an analog scope. So uh, triggering is used to synchronize the sweep of the, the beam across the screen to the signal that you're looking at. Uh, and triggering controls are usually all kind of grouped together like they are here on this uh, 465B Tektronix scope. We're going to talk about each of these controls. A uh, way to think about it, I'll throw this thing into kind of a slow sweep and kind of a, a, a single sweep mode. And the trigger basically says, I'm going to kick off the sweep now. Okay, and I'm just doing a, a quick little single sweep on this to kind of show that I'm just kicking off the sweep at a certain point in time. Triggering is normally done by looking at a portion of the input signal and telling the, you know, the sweep to go across at the same point in time in a repetitive signal or any, or any kind of a signal. Um, so we're going to talk about kind of how that works and the controls that we have. Um, so I just have a sine wave going into the input here. I'm DC coupled. We can kind of see the DC coupling control here. And uh, we're just looking at uh, the waveform. And you notice the waveform is starting at, uh, at one particular spot. Okay. Uh, so looking at the trigger controls, we'll see what kind of controls that. So down at the trigger controls, we've got a couple of things we can look at here. Uh, we have a level control, okay, which is right here. Uh, level and slope, we'll talk about what that is. There's also a source control, if you kind of look above there, it says source, and coupling, and trigger mode. We'll cover each of these things briefly. So uh, what we're doing is, uh, the source control says, what are we going to trigger on? What's, what signal are we going to use as our synchronizing reference to, to the, uh, the signal we want to go look at? So on most scopes, you'll at least have the ability to trigger on you know, any of the channels that you're looking at. Like you can see here, so I've got channel 1, channel 2. I've got, uh, so I can literally trigger on the signal coming into channel 1 of the scope or signal coming into channel 2 of the scope. Uh, if you have a norm position or vertical mood, what that says is that whatever you've got set up for the vertical input, if you're chopping between channel 1 and channel 2 or alternating back and forth between 1 and channel 2, then the norm position or the vertical mode position will trigger on whichever signal is active at that point in the chop or the ultimate sweep. Uh, so, uh, so in this case, we've got a signal going into channel 1. So we can either use the norm position or the channel 1 position, like right there. If I go to channel 2, we can see I don't have a synchronized sweep here anymore. I don't have a signal coming into channel 2, so the sweep is kind of unrecognizable. If I bring this back up to channel 1, boom, we're triggered again. Okay. We also can trigger on line. What line means is it basically looks at the 60 hertz line, you know, 60 hertz here in the U.S., and triggering on you know the line current so every 16.7 milliseconds. There's also an external trigger on this scope here which allows me to couple into a signal or couple another signal into here and trigger on that and view my channels 1 and 2 with respect to some external signal. Okay, So we'll leave it on, on channel 1. The mode and slope control here says where am I going to trigger on the waveform. Okay. So the level control is a control that I can move back and forth kind of vertical, vernier here, okay? And if we look at this, if I'm moving this positive and negative, let's look at what happens on the scope at the same time. If you look very carefully at the leading edge here, if I move the trigger uh, level up, we can see we're starting the sweep at a, at a later point in time, or a, you know, a higher point in the voltage. If I move the trigger level down, we're triggering at a lower level in the voltage. So you can pick and choose where in the waveform you actually want to trigger. So if you get a more complex waveform than I have right here, you might pick a particular amplitude or something to go trigger on. So very common if you have some distorted waveforms, you might try to adjust the level so that you only pick off the peak of the signal instead of somewhere in the middle uh, so you don't get kind of a double or triple waveform kind of uh, you know on the screen. Now the slope control is this little switch here in the middle. Okay, Positive or negative says that do I want to trigger on when the signal is coming up through that voltage or when it's going down. If I switch it to negative, now I can trigger on when it's going down through that threshold. So the level that I've set, do I want to tr trigger when I, my signal crosses it from coming from above or crosses it coming from the bottom. So that's a positive slope trigger and the negative slope trigger. So that's what those two do. So if we I see if I adjust that, we can actually see that change. Okay. So that's what the level and slope and the uh, source controls do. Now the coupling control, this one's kind of interesting. 
The coupling control basically says, okay, I know I'm going to trigger, say, on this source, but how, I'm going to, how am I going to take that signal and couple it to the trigger circuit? Okay. If I go to simply DC coupling, okay, which is what I've got right here, let me adjust my level here again, okay, what that says is I've got whatever I've got coming in here, I'm DC coupling that into the scope. I can adjust my slope up or down, okay, and trigger on that. But if I adjust the DC offset on my signal itself, okay, watch what happens. You can see the signal is moving, the whole signal is moving up or down. Okay, and if I move it outside of where my, my trigger level is set right to the middle of the screen now, and if I move the signal past that, I'm not triggered anymore, okay, because my trigger level is kind of fixed in the middle of the screen. If I move this up here and now move my trigger level up higher, I can actually trigger on that signal again. Now I can see my trigger level is sitting right up right there, and if I move my DC level of my signal again, now I'm going to move around that, okay. So that may or may not be convenient for what you want to do. You may actually want to try and trigger on the signal regardless of where it is sitting, you know, DC-wise. So the other very common trigger coupling control to use, instead of using DC coupling like we're using right here, is to use AC coupling. If I move that up to AC coupling, okay, and now if I set a threshold like in the middle of that AC signal, regardless of its DC offset, I'm still triggering on it because the AC coupling is removing the DC component of this signal and I'm only triggering on the AC component. And typically that, uh, that cutoff frequency is somewhere around 20 or 30 hertz. Um, so you know, anything that's above 20 or 30 hertz will get coupled to the trigger circuit and anything lower than that essentially gets rejected or blocked by uh, essentially the, uh, the, the AC coupling. So that's kind of a very common control to use. It makes it really easy to trigger on signals regardless of what their DC offset is, you know, if we kind of adjust that up or down. Okay. Uh, there's other, other two. Some, some scopes have these, some do not. You'll see one that says LF reject and HF reject. That stands for low frequency reject and high frequency reject. Uh, and what that low frequency reject is basically a, another form of AC coupling but with a higher frequency uh, high pass corner where AC coupling, you know, anything above 20 or 30 hertz will essentially go to the trigger circuit. The low frequency reject moves that uh, high pass corner to probably something more like 50 kilohertz or more. Uh, again, it's going to vary by scope, but that means that anything below 50 kilohertz now is rejected. So all of the eight, all the audio frequencies and things like that are blocked. So only very higher, you know, much higher frequencies, you know, higher than audio frequencies, ultrasonic and higher, are going to get coupled to the trigger circuit. HF reject uh, is kind of um, you know kind of in between the two. So what HF reject does is rejects everything, say above that 50 kilohertz. Okay, so all the high frequency, radio frequency, high frequency stuff will be rejected. So everything above 50 kilohertz will not get coupled to the trigger circuit. It's also still an AC coupled mode. So you're still going to block everything you know, below about 20 or 30 hertz. So it's really kind of a bandpass coupling for kind of audio frequencies typically. But again, it'll vary by the, by the particular scope and manufacturer that you're dealing with. Uh, not used that often, but they are there, and they can, can come in handy for some complex waveforms sometimes. Now, on some other scopes, you also see coupling that are for specific to telev old analog television signals, like um, you know, NTSC signals, and you'll see something that says like uh, uh, TV horizontal and TV vertical, and that's designed to trigger on a portion of the uh, NTSC composite video signal. The horizontal blanking, or the horizontal retrace, or horizontal sync pulse, and the vertical sync pulses that are in those waveforms. But if you're not working on TVs, you probably don't have to worry about those. Now, the other important controls for triggering are the mode controls. And you'll see I've got here, it's got three modes we've got auto, norm, and single. Uh, and what these are are um, uh, basically going to control you know, how the trigger circuit's going to work. If you have an auto control, I'd recommend using that because what that does is in the absence of a trigger, if, this, if you don't have the trigger circuit set up right, let's say for example I move this threshold or the level you know, way out of whack here, okay, and you can see I'm not triggering, but I still have a signal here on the scope, I still have a trace. 
because what the auto mode does is that if I don't get a valid trigger based on what I've got set up here, it sends a, a sweep anyway about 20 or 30 times a second. Okay, it'll re-trigger the circuit automatically. Um, so it's helpful because it'll put, at least put something on the screen so you've got something to look at. Um, and that's what the automatic you know, trigger mode does. If we switch to the normal trigger, you can see now I don't have a trace on the screen because I had messed around with my trigger level control. And now I'll have to kind of play with the trigger level until my signal comes back. And we can see the signal only comes up when I've got the trigger level kind of sitting you know, within the signal boundaries. Okay, so that you know that's useful, but you know if you're dealing with very low repeti low repetition signals where the signal doesn't repeat itself anything more than 20 or 30 times a second, you probably have to use the normal. Otherwise, the auto trigger will send a sweep when you don't want it. But uh, normally, you can use the auto trigger mode. That way, you'll, you'll always have a trace whether or not you've got the trigger set up right away. And tech was tech kind of adopted the policy that if you got the if you set the, the threshold to kind of mid scale or the level to mid scale and you push all the other controls to and to their top positions auto AC coupling normal you'll almost always have a trace so it's a good starting point and some other scope manufacturers have kind of uh, adopted that as well that you know turn turn all the switches up and it kind of gives you in a mode where at least you'll get a trace and you can start from there. Now there's one other control which uh, a lot of people maybe don't really know a lot about is this one down here called hold off. Now what the hold off does is it kind of controls how quickly the scope will re-trigger or rearm the trigger circuit to get ready for the next sweep. Normally it's set all the way to kind of its minimum position by turning it all the way down. Okay, And what that says is that once I send a sweep across the screen, as soon as it's done, I, I get ready to sweep again and rearm the trigger circuit, wait for the next trigger to go again. Now, in some, in some cases, you might have a complex waveform, or maybe if you're looking at digital signals and you're looking at like a series of oh, pulses, and then there's going to be a gap, and then another series of pulses. Sometimes you don't want a trigger right away because maybe when it comes right back and it's ready to sweep again, you're going to be in the middle of the next repetition of waveforms. Now, let me show you an example of what that might look like. I'm going to start create a, a bursted set of signals here. Okay, uh, out of the out of my signal generator. So now I've got a bursted set of you know, sine wave, if you will, and uh, and then it goes quiet for a while, and then it comes back on. And you can see, I almost like it looks like they're overlapped here, because what's happening is I'm I'm getting one sweep, okay, and, and then it's going kind of going quiet, and then when it gets gets ready to arm again, it comes up somewhere in the middle of the next burst. So I get these signals that kind of overlap. In fact, I can see this if I go to kind of my single sweep mode and I push the single sweep button, I can see that with the repetitions, I don't really have an overlap. I just have kind of one, re one you know, version of the signal going here. So if I go back to my triggered mode, what the hold off allows me to do is to adjust the amount of time that the trigger, is, trigger circuit's not going to look for another trigger. So if we adjust this control, we can slowly move this thing up and eventually reach a point where we've told the trigger to hold off long enough so that when it rearms again, it's ready right at the beginning of the next sweep. And there we go. So now I've got a nice waveform. I just adjusted that hold off control. And it's just something you play with manually and watch the screen. So now I've actually adjusted it so that I'm triggering at the first you know, cycle of my burst here. And I'm getting the burst, I'm getting the quiet time and the, the part of the next burst. But now I've told it, hold off the trigger for a certain period of time that I've adjusted here so that as soon as it rearmed again, it was ready to kind of see the next burst coming across here. And if you don't have that adjusted right, you can get kind of this overlapping kind of waveform. And once you get it adjusted right, you can kind of stabilize these more complex waveforms. So uh, it makes it easy to, to really kind of trigger on these complex, periodic, bursty type of things that would be very tough to stabilize and get without that kind of control and looking at it this way. So anyway, so that's kind of the basic controls that you would have on a typical triggered sweep oscilloscope and how you would use and adjust each of those to get a nice stable display. Um, I hope that's been helpful.